Hardly a day goes by that we don't hear something about a home being burglarized or a car stolen. This week, Dave Winters begins a series on how to protect your belongings from thieves. Dave? Bob, a man's home is said to be his castle, but a home is not an impregnable fortress. Actually, a home is a very easy target for thieves, as I found out when I interviewed an admitted burglar at the Fayette County Detention Center. A house is the easiest thing we will break into. Most amateurs that I've seen, they take and they'll carry, you know, a screwdriver, a crowbar. That's burglary tools. That's the chores right there in the cell. If you get, if just walking down the street with a screwdriver, they get you a right a burglary tool. Mm -hmm. I carry a knife. Strode says he carries a knife because that's the only tool he needs to go through the window of a home. If the storm window was not down, usually what they would do is rip the screen, run a screwdriver up between the double hung windows, and just simply pop the lock off. So is they're going to try to do it as quietly as possible? They want to be as quietly and do it as quickly as possible. Is that the way most home burglaries are? Uh, very little actual destructive damage is just quietly slipping in? They usually have their own mode of operation mm -hmm. and uh, they follow that the same way every time the people that are into burglary as a business. But what can you do to make your windows more secure? You could try a simple procedure called pinning your windows. Uh, you take a drill, drill through the first window and into the back window at a slight downward angle and then just insert a pin or a large nail. Now, we don't want the window so tight or the nail in there so tight that you can't get out in case of fire. Uh, so make the hole just a little bit larger in diameter. Then, so the uh, nail will be loose. So the nail would come out if you had to get out in a hurry. But if you do that on this side of the window and on this side of the window, then if they pop the lock, the window will not move. Tomorrow we'll take a look at the security of door locks. This is Dave Winters, 36 Eyewitness News. Dave, what about putting locks on windows? Well, Bob, they offer very little security. It's more of an inconvenience to the homeowner to have to locate a key to raise and lower the window. And if you think about it, the, uh, the confusion at the time of a fire, it could be hazardous to your health trying to find that key to get out. And what about metal bars? Would that be any more secure? More secure. Uh, it will keep the burglar out and it will keep the homeowner in. And uh, according to officials, is the worst thing you can do because there's no way you're going to get out of your house in the case of a fire. Okay, thank you, Dave. We've all heard the saying, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Well, the same is true for locked doors. Dave Winters has more in his series on protecting your home from burglars. Dave? Bob, most of us have a false sense of security when we lock the doors to our homes. This is the type of lock found on most homes. It is a spring-loaded cylinder that can be easily opened by inserting a credit card along the striker. Or the thief, if he wants to get in real easily, just takes a small pipe wrench, puts it on the front of the doorknob, and rips the knob off the door. Recommend adding a single cylinder deadbolt lock. The single cylinder has the thumb latch on the inside. We would also recommend any deadbolt that you buy that you get the one inch bolt. Uh, it provides uh, a whole lot more security. Uh, you can go out and buy, quote, a deadbolt lock with a half inch bolt in it and you've just wasted your money. But a strong lock doesn't mean your door can't be broken into. Some people make the mistake of installing a good lock on a cheap door. Doyle recommends that outside doors be either solid wood or metal. Another easy way to enter a house is through the patio sliding doors. Sliding doors are extremely vulnerable because a thief doesn't have to break the lock or glass to gain entrance to the house. The thief simply uses a heavy screwdriver to lift the door off its sliding track. The door would then be pushed away and the thief is now in your home. The common practice of laying a stick in the sliding track will not prevent the thief from getting in, but if you put some screws in the sliding track above the door, this will prevent that door from being raised off its track. Tomorrow we'll take a look at security lights. This is Dave Winters, 36 Eyewitness News.
Well, one of the most effective ways to deter potential burglars is by using outdoor lights. Eyewitness News reporter Dave Winters continues his series on how to protect your property against thieves. Dave? Bob, it's a well-known fact that thieves don't want to be seen in the act of a crime. Therefore, one of the easiest ways to protect your home from burglars is to install lights outside your house. Uh, is a significant deterrent. Uh, we strongly recommend it if it's used properly. What most people like to do is to mount lights up on the corners of their houses and to focus floodlights or spotlights away from the house so that if they hear something, they can flip a switch, look out in their backyard, and see what the problem is. However, when they focus these lights away from the house, it creates a shadow area next to the house. And so if someone were actually tampering with your residence, your neighbors back here wouldn't be able to see them because of the shadow that's created. So we strongly recommend that if you do install uh, floodlights, that you be sure and focus them against the house. Now this particular house doesn't have floodlights, but it does have overhang lights. And by being mounted right here, there's one here and one over there, the light comes directly down and against the house. So this would be an ideal situation. Uh, if someone were fooling with the garage door or with the other door and the lights were on, then your neighbors would be able to see them. But outdoor lighting is not a guarantee your home will not be broken into. If, if a house has lights on the outside, floodlights or pole lights or anything like that, does that bother you? No, because I mean, if you're going to break into it, we go away from the light if all possible. They want to have, uh, unless they're filthy rich, you know. They never have lights all the way around the house. There's always one blind spot. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you know, very few guys nowadays actually that, that plan it is going to be breaking to a place at nighttime. I broke into a couple places broad daylight. Is it easier? Yeah, it's easier because people expect to, expect to see people going around. Tomorrow we'll take a look at the security provided by electronic burglar alarms. This is Dave Wetters, 36 Eyewitness News. Authorities in Nicholasville are continuing to investigate several burglaries that occurred Tuesday night. According to a reliable source, four homes in the Lone Oak subdivision were broken into. The burglars were reportedly scared away when they broke into a house that had a guard dog. In an effort to protect against burglars, many homeowners have turned to electronic alarm systems. Dave Winters continues his series on protecting your home from thieves. Your home is most vulnerable to burglars when everyone is away, like at work or school. One way of protecting your home when no one is there is by an electronic alarm system. There are various types of alarm systems. Some are called area protectors and are designed to protect an entire room or group of rooms. This is accomplished through almost silent sonar waves. Other types of alarm systems protect points of entry like doors or windows. This is accomplished by either breaking a beam of light or by triggering a switch at the door or window as the burglar enters. What about uh, home burglar alarms? That bother you? Yeah. Would you avoid a house just because it had one? Yeah, buddy. Because most of the ways that come off are on the inside of the house. And I mean, I don't figure that I like jail. I'd just soon be out of here right now. I'm just doing 60 days. But uh, yeah, I would avoid it if at all possible. So would most people. Because I mean, you have to be, you have to work with that kind of thing. I've never worked with a home burglar at all. You have to work with that kind of thing in order to know how to, you know, cut them off. I don't know how. There's one other type of alarm system many homeowners like to use, dogs. But dogs are not dependable. Very few dog, guard dogs that actually want to bite you. There's some of them will if you take him run from them. But if you go right at that dog, he's going to stop and think just for a minute. Now, I've never used any violence on that animal, never would. I know a few guys just bragged about having to, you know, kill a few of them. David, these burglar alarms expensive. Well, it's possible for a homeowner to spend several hundred dollars on an alarm system to protect every door and window of their house, but they don't have to. 
Some alarm systems like this one, this is a door alarm, cost less than $20 and you just attach it to the door and anytime the door is open, the alarm goes off. That's simple. That's simple. Okay, what's coming up tomorrow night? Well, tomorrow night we'll take a look at how a burglar determines which homes are the easy targets. Thank you, Dave. Why do burglars pick certain homes to break into while leaving others alone? Dave Winters has the answer as he continues his series on protecting your valuables from thieves. Dave? Bob, statistics show that home burglaries are on the rise. Some say it's the result of the poor economy. But how does a burglar single out the house he plans to break into when he has a whole neighborhood to choose from? Three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning, if the light's on the house, you know there ain't nobody home. They say, we'll leave your light on. Well, you know ain't nobody going to be at home at three or four o'clock in the morning with the light on. Well, there's a few people, maybe. Well, you watch the house a few times, you know. Sometimes you might even look in the newspaper, look in my obituaries, see who's died. Mm -hmm. And, you know, check out the address. If, if most people go in, like, from another town, you know, people can to them, they go up there and they leave their houses empty. All right. They might say, well, have the newspaper pick up the, the news, uh, next door neighbor pick up the newspaper. But that ain't about nothing. Most so, how would a burglar protect his house from other burglars? Well, it doesn't do no good to nail your window shut because they got these things called glass covers. Mm -hmm. First, I would get me a female dog and leave her in there. And I don't know about these new devices they got, for these burglary devices. I don't know how good they are, but I would check into them, find the best one. Uh, maybe even find two different kinds, if at all possible. And uh, I would keep a dog in the backyard. It doesn't make no difference, male or female, but I would keep one chained up. You, probably a coon dog, because coon dogs, every time you get a man gets limb, they like to bark, they think they're going to coon hunt. Uh, something like I make noise. And I would find me some nosy neighbors to live by, you know, <laughs> some very nosy neighbors. I always like to keep the nose in my business. Yeah, if I was going to protect my house, I would find every possible way. I'd make sure everything was locked. That includes the upstairs windows. Which if my mother happens to be watching this, y'all lock you up stair window because it's always unlocked. That's how I get in your house all the time. But uh, yeah, I would I, mm, I would put a couple of deadbolt locks on my doors. It wouldn't hurt. I mean, so I had to put out a few bucks. Look at the money I could save. Big deal, I might have some extra stuff insured, but it'd be a few things that I'd forget to get insured. Insurance companies don't always pay off. Mm -hmm. If they can get away from it, they're not going to pay off. Uh, I didn't put a lock, lock or two on my screen. Put bells on my screen doors when somebody opened them. For all possible, I would, uh, well, my mother, she's got bars on the windows. That makes her house fairly safe, except for the upstairs windows. You know, they're not barred up. It's, a, it's an old house. Some of these new houses don't do it. I would, uh, yeah, if at all possible, use plastic glass instead of winning. Not sure, but, I mean, it takes money. Mm. Of course, I'd have to do a lot of still in order to get the money <laughs> to fix the house up like it is, you know. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll take a look at how you can protect another big investment, your car. Thank you, Dave. All this week we have been discussing how to protect your home from burglars. Tonight Dave Winters concludes his series with a look at how you can protect your car. The second biggest investment for the average family is the automobile. According to police, many car thefts were invited by the owner. The most important anti-theft device that a homeowner or vehicle owner has is the key. Uh, people leave the keys in the car, they leave the cars unlocked, and anyone with any ability at all uh, can usually hotwire a car. So what we have to do is uh, create deterrence uh, or take measures to reduce auto thefts. 
Auto thefts are up approximately 35% in Fayette County this year. There's several measures that can be taken. The first, of course, is don't leave the keys in the car and lock the door. Secondly, on a vehicle like this, you could install what we call a kill switch. Uh, it would be a hidden switch so that when you get out of the car, you flip the switch and it would uh, keep someone from hot wiring the vehicle and uh, driving off with it. Another way to protect your car is through the Kentucky Vehicle Identification Program. A police officer, free of charge, will place a permanent number on all glass windows of your car. The number is traceable, therefore the thief would have to change all of the glass windows to be able to sell the car. And that is just too expensive and too time consuming for a thief. They would rather just pick an easier target. This is Dave Winters, 36 Eyewitness News.